Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader exclusive review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to show you the Kobo Mini. This is a 5 inch e reader. That's a bit of a departure from their other 6 inch devices on the market. The resolution is 600 by 800. It uses e ink Visplex and you have roughly about 2 gigs of internal memory. It is running on Wi Fi, so it will allow you to make purchases as long as you're connected to a free hotspot or even just your own uh, local connection at home. The CPU is 800 megahertz, so it's very speedy considering it's a very small package. It does allow you to do most things fairly quickly and you'll really notice that as the review video progresses. Peter here is going to give you a full 360. Alright, um, this looks very close to the Kobo Glow, uh, but uh, of course it's a 5 inch and the Kobo Glow is a 6 inch and we'll show you that in the comparison video that you can find on our YouTube channel. They use the same hard rubber uh, quality housing, very nice, very good grip, although quite fingerprinty for something that isn't uh, that doesn't have a piano finish so you'll notice that as you hold it this is the back it's a very it's a quilted back so much wider uh, kind of argyle diamonds than the previous Kobo touch but I think it looks pretty good and uh, you can swap the backs out to multiple colors if you uh, remove that and if you purchase them at uh, various dealers and when you remove the backing you will see the hard reboot button the little pinhole that you stick a uh, paper clip or a pin in in order to do a full reboot if your uh, Kobo is acting up nothing on the left no manual page turns no hard buttons of any kind in terms of uh, interactivity nothing on the right micro USB port on the bottom for transferring data and charging your Kobo Mini and you have status indicator light and a slider power bar that also activates standby mode and brings you out of standby mode so there isn't really any hardware buttons in terms of uh, how you interact with it it's all software driven on screen one thing I noticed right away is the absence of micro SD yes uh, there wasn't an, there's no expandable memory and as Michael said it does uh, advertises two gigs however you really only get one to maybe 1.6 depending on uh, the updates you've done um, you know the synced content you have loaded so uh, you don't really get a whole lot to use with and of course as we just mentioned it is not expandable yes yeah, so this is where the whole Kobo books in the cloud comes into play any purchase that you make is automatically stored with Kobo and can be accessed with their iOS Android Blackberry and other applications so this is good because if your device starts getting full, you can just start deleting books and it's not like your purchases are gone forever. They're just basically gone from the device. You notice your home screen here. It pretty well is homogenized between the Kobo Glow and the new firmware update for the Kobo Touch. So most of these menus will look the same in terms of their features and such. You have Reading and Discover. These are the two main functions on both of the menus and you get sort of like a scrolling slideshow here. This is a touch screen so everything is interacted with right on the device. Which is good because on a 5 inch e-reader the keyboard is actually fairly hard to type on. You find a book that you want, you can click on it, you go right to the store entry for it, you can read a preview, buy it now, pinning it is like sort of wish listing it so to speak. You can say not interested and it won't appear up here anymore. We'll just hit reading. So reading life, sort of working our way here, gives you your stats. More or less encourages you to sign up with Facebook, but on any given book that you're reading at the time, minutes each session, hours read, pages turned, you can see that we have only used this book as our go-to book for yeah, yeah. review videos and such. You can also earn awards and achievements and send them to your friends in Facebook. Kind of compare each other's, you know, awards and such. I do like the system Kobo has because it's 
this award-based system and percentage of completion-based system with uh, each individual books. It kind of encourages you to read more because you want to get those badges and you want to get those trophies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would say it's probably a little bit more appropriate for the younger demographic that, you know, is enamored with things like this. Yeah. Hitting the menu button up here will allow you to sync content. So with particular emphasis on on firmware updates and newspapers or ebook purchases you make on maybe your tablet or on your PC you hit that and it'll sync any purchase that you made on any other device but this one here search will allow you to search for things on your reader you hit help and you'll get sort of your nine or ten page quick start user manual just basically hypes up the most exciting features to preserve battery life you want to turn the wi-fi off if you're not surfing the internet making ebook purchases and so on home button is at the top there is no physical home key anymore on the latest Kobo devices. So some people have said that they miss it. It's software driven. That's the way more or less the industry is going. I'm going to click the X here, kind of get rid of that. Find books is basically the, the Kobo ecosystem. So you can check out books that are recommended for you based on past purchases from Kobo. Categories basically gives you a very text heavy type of uh, format for finding the categories within Kobo. So you can see here, this is the main categories. Each one sort of opens up submenus. There's arrows on the key here instead of touching it on the side. A lot of the Kobo menus have little arrows at the bottom. So you can see here sci fi fantasy. And then you could refine your search further. So let's check out graphic novels. And there really isn't a wide array of Looks comics like of, you know, for the e-reader. It's just the one there. <laughs> yeah, so probably not the best category here. Let's just show mystery and suspense. One would figure that it would have. <laughs> it's good to note though. Yeah. I mean, one thing about Kobo is that you really kind of have to click on like three or four different menus and sub menus to really refine your search because who really wants to click back and forward with like a thousand different options. Exactly. So I would probably rather have a little deeper sub menu system for categories. It did narrow it down rather well and I almost wish there was another category even further than legal because it looks like there's 74 pages here. Yeah. We can refine the search but it doesn't look like we can really narrow it down. Um, you just but do... you could also search like there oh, are absolutely. search functions built oh, yeah. within the store. So yeah there's an example of like how deep their category function is. So. It's just interesting to note down. Free ebooks is probably something here that most people will be enamored with. It's literally millions of free books with Kobo. And again, you can click on the top here to sort of refine your search a little bit more. So yeah, let's just, as, as an example, let's check out A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Just click download and that's as simple as it is it's uh, now basically downloading to the e-reader itself if you click on the cover art it'll basically give you full information here ISBN language a lot of the free books don't really have like a very uh, expansive product description But if, uh, you know, if you want to read, like, you saw in, in prior things, you could see the, you know, the full samples, full description, ratings, and everything like that. So free books, because they're a little bit of a different beast than normal ebooks, that's how it is. You can see reading lists here. This is probably something that you would probably want to check out, like, right away in terms of bundles, 
deals, staff picks, New York Times bestsellers, you know, so this is probably the category that should probably will be your go-to category. What ebooks just came out this week? I mean, every week new <clears throat> new titles are being released. So if you're an avid reader, you probably want to pay more particular attention to this. So you see page turns are pretty quick. You do see that loading menu a lot. Our Wi-Fi connections maybe not the best. So it's not indicative to every user's experience. Again, you can click here and see a full description of the book. A little bit more comprehensive, I would say. You kind of scroll here to read through the product description and such. There's only so much that can be shown on a 5-inch screen. And Peter here is going to show you the library. All right. So let's go to library and then over to books. This is where we will find all of the stuff we had uh, both synced and loaded on ourselves. So you can choose from uh, many different books. Uh, you'll see you, your pictures will be here, um, comics, everything kind of all, all under uh, one roof. But we will start with the e-reading experience because that is what we are all about here. So we'll just go read now and let's get to some text and here we go so it is touch screen and you you'll see that even though it is a five inch screen it's displaying it's well it's utilizing as much of the screen real estate as, as it is and i think it's doing a pretty good job of it so if we press and hold on night you see that we instantly get a full uh three actually there's pages and pages of it so it looks like we get nine maybe yeah, 12 different definitions of uh, the word night in uh, the dictionary. So that's really useful. And we also have these little anchors we can grab. And, uh, oh, got to get out of that first. To further expand the text and what we want to highlight. You see it's a little bit laggy there. Let's close that so we can get our options going here. We just earned there an award. Oh, there you go. Word up. There'll be prompts at the bottom of the screen there. So uh, on your highlights, you can also note down and you can uh, share on Facebook and stuff like that. So if you make a note, you can highlight it. Let's just highlight that little part there. You can see it's now grayed out. So if we go and uh, oh, let's exit out of that. If we go and we progress in the book and you say, oh, what was that highlight again? All right, at, and then there you go. You got your note there. You can also add note to it. Keyboard, uh, while we're here, um, responsive, uh, very accurate. However, when it gets towards the keys on the bezel here, they're very difficult to press. You almost you almost miss them sometimes because it's just there's just so little room between that edge and or the the, the touch surface isn't as yeah big. it's almost like if you want to press p it's sort of hard because you're kind of half touching the exactly. side of the bezel here because it's, it's hard to see on camera but there's actually sort of a groove between the side of the case and the screen it's almost like there sunken it so is. it's not like you know, most e-ink screens are sunken, right? As opposed to like being flush, like a, yeah, yeah, like a tablet is usually flush. Usually, yes, exactly. Uh, because this is use this isn't conventional uh, Gorilla Glass or plastic um, capacitive. There is a different method of where this. There's a different uh, design functionality as to where the the screen has to sit. It has to sit lower to recognize your your touches. So you see we made a note there and uh, we can also define it, search in book or share on Facebook. So it's pretty similar to the other Kobos. Uh, gives you a decent amount of um, flexibility as to what you can do with your notes. Okay, to me this text looks kind of small. It what, does. what can I do to enhance it or to make it larger? So you press the uh, bar at the bottom to bring up your uh, f your options and your font options and so forth. We'll start with the font because that's pretty much what people want to augment for their reading 
uh, comfortability. So looks like there's not the Amazon style of the different levels of A's you can choose. There are slider bars, so it actually does give you a little bit more flexibility with what you can uh, choose to change your fonts. You can go ridiculously small, which we don't really recommend on a 5-inch screen, or you can go to another extremity, to the very large. So you'll notice, let's just get out of here. You know, if you... I mean, it's, it doesn't display very much per page, but I mean, it gets the job done in terms of zooming it. So just for uh, testing purposes, we'll keep it around there. We can also change the font face. So from Georgia to Gil Sands, everything changes live. You see there's our highlight we made earlier. Can also change line spacing. Very tight or doesn't do very much on this book. You got margins as well. Doesn't seem to be adjusting anything real time here. Uh, keep in mind, this is also a side loaded book right. too. Many of the options don't seem to work uh, on a side loaded book here, but uh, you can go to advanced and you can adjust font size and the weight to make it very dark and the sharpness and you'll see what your before and after um, really looks like so you can see that Michael is adjusting the text and on the left is what you're currently reading and on the right is what you want it to look like and we want our text to be a little bit lighter on the eyes so we'll select apply and now the text will conform itself to what uh, we had chosen there. Yeah so this is an interesting function and I do dig sort of the preview window here this advanced functionality is also now on the Kobo Touch as well. So lots of cool sort of options that no other e-reader really has and Kobo is really sort of making themselves a little bit distinctive in the market. The dictionary also works on side-loaded books. This was a this is a big concern with a lot of users with with a lot of e-readers out there. So this device will allow you to look up words, make notes, and other things. Exactly. You see right there, we uh, we just press and hold on uh, family and it shows you all the definitions of, uh, of that. And um, if you click the bottom and go to the book here, you can also get the standard thing, table of contents, annotations. You can do a search for general words and uh, sentences within the book, define and translate word. We kind of touched on dictionaries a little bit, so I, I just want to show you guys something in the settings menu here. There's actually a thing for languages, and you can see that there's 13 dictionaries installed. You can hit edit here, and you can actually uninstall dictionaries if you want, but you do notice that there's a lot of support here for like German, French, Dutch, and then different degrees of English, and Italian. You'll also, and you'll also notice that they do have access uh, they have um, compatibility with complex Asian characters as well. A lot of e-readers have trouble with that due to resolution issues. And yeah, so I forth. mean, it, it's the whole thing that Kobo's in Japan now. So, but yeah, I mean, if you want, you can just disable Dutch if you want altogether and hit save. And this will help free up memory. So if you're like low on memory, you could delete a lot of the alt dictionaries and things like that. So I just wanted to point that out, seeing as though we're on a subject no, of like dictionaries and things like absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, final setting here would be, um, well, well, the second to last actually would be quick navigation. You see, we have 200, 325 pages, and it sure would take a long time to swipe through all those. So you can do a quick navigation, and it'll go right to the page that you want to look up. Yeah, it's a useful feature. You notice a lot of the Kobo menus have sliders. Even mm -hmm. the, in the when we were browsing the ebook store, a lot of sliders really kind of helped go from. Yeah, exactly. It offers more. F it, it offers just quicker navigation than pressing where you want to go. So and having a touch screen, who really wants to swipe? You know, thirty oh, yeah. pages in advance. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We have add to shelf, um, the, and we can add this to shelves that we created. You see here's a goodie reader one. So you can create as many shelves as you want, uh, you know, favorites, action, or you can name them and rename them and customize them. Yeah, if you have like, you know, 10 or 50 books, or if you're a huge avid reader, you might want to have a fantasy shelf. Or if the e-reader is in the family, you know, 
family little, shelf. Little Johnny's shelf yeah. or, you know, dad's shelf, that sort of thing. You can mark as finished for your statistics as we showed you earlier on Reading Life. And you can go to Reading Settings. And this is a, uh, we showed you on previous videos that you can choose how much of the screen you want to allocate for what command. So this would be the first 30% of the screen for back, the last 30% for forward, 30% um, for back, 70% for forward, and so forth. So you can really choose where you want to uh, split the screen for uh, whether you want to do more front page turns or back page turns. And this is good for people that are holding it either in their left or right hand. Exactly. You know, if you're mm -hmm. if you're left-handed, you might want this option. This option might be better for you. This is the default one. You know, it's sort of like split between <coughs> screens. But it's cool that it does give you the options. This is also for page e refresh. So you noticed when we were turning pages and books, it wasn't showing you that flicker every time you were turning a page a lot of e-readers don't allow you to change the page turn refresh rate for e-ink this is default set to every six pages but you can change it to like you know one but i would probably say six is, is probably ideal because you really don't want that flickering taking you out of that you out of the experience of reading and when you have a full flicker it sort of takes you out of that almost visceral experience. I, I would agree and uh, this is pretty much self-explanatory so if you want to show the page numbers there you go so that's just added settings for your convenience. Alright so we showed you the ebook experience and this was more applicable to like a side-loaded book uh, of course when you check out your library here this is where the majority of your content shown course the u ubiquitous settings menu you click here and you could actually view it in different ways so more cover art versus more books being able to be displayed at any given time I believe this is a book that we purchased from Kobo so let's see if the line spaces and stuff matter. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, this one has more flexibility. Um, the Kristen Hanna book we had was a side-loaded book we had purchased elsewhere, so um, they didn't have full compatibility with all these settings. But you will see that we can uh, fully utilize margins and uh, line spacing and so forth. So make the most out of the it, screen. It really makes with like books that are purchased from Kobo a lot of the things were more pronounced. Now it could have been just like an error with the book that we sideloaded although with other e-readers we haven't really mm -hmm. noticed that issue but I wanted to load this book just to point out the difference that line spacing and margins actually make. Another big thing with Kobo is newspapers. Now you see newspaper and magazine category here and we have different issues of the Vancouver Sun that we've taken out a subscription to. Now I'd like to point out that you can actually take out newspaper subscriptions directly on the e-reader. Instead, when you open up the newspaper and magazine category for the first time, it actually gives you instructions that you have to lo lo log into Kobo.com or whatever uh, version of the, the web store that you're tapping into. If you live in Germany, of course, you're tapping into the German aspect, Netherlands, and, and, and you know, so on. And so you have to take out the newspaper subscription on your PC, Mac, laptop, and t take out a subscription through there. And then once you actually sync on the menu, every newspaper will be automatically delivered to you. Exactly. It reads much like a book, so you have all the same options. You have font options, quick slider bar, uh, annotations, table of contents. Uh, you can adjust the you can adjust the reading settings pretty much the same. Um, it, it does it does pretty much perform much like a book. So yeah, you could really see that this doesn't really look like a like a fully featured type of article with like tons of pictures and content. This is more like a newspaper that reads like a book, and it and, and so doing such it gives you control over notes, being able to highlight words, look up words in a dictionary, and, and you know so on, and adjust all like the fonts and stuff. You did see when we were uh, changing uh, the fonts down here that some things were grayed out you can't actually edit certain things but you click on advanced you can't still change like the, the weight sharpness. and the sharpness yeah. and all that
Okay, let's check out the PDF experience. This is something that a lot of people that, uh, you know, that buy these devices, PDFs one of the most accessible formats on the internet. You know, you do have uh, Mobi and, and EPUB and proprietary formats, but pretty well every single e-reader out there supports the PDF format just because it's a little bit more open. It is. I mean, PDF can be anything from a picture to a, a user manual such as this to um, a book. So PDF is a very widely used format. Uh, format and we'll see here we have a good contrasted picture up there and say we want to dive into it deeper and figure out well what does it look like up close it's so very small right it now. is it's it's very small but the naked eye so what you want to do is go to the bottom and use the zoom slider bar another slider bar and this will dive a little bit deeper into the uh, page so you see you have a preview up there and what you can do is from there you can do live it does kind of live rendering um, of uh, where you're navigating and once you do hit that sweet spot you can let go and it'll fully render the picture and now that looks good it very good on this this size screen with that size resolution is very good it's it, it, it satisfies you for sure we've noticed so far in in the newspapers and and uh, ebooks that we are looking at that it's pretty well all portrait mode yes now I mean, if I'm reading comics, if I'm reading graphic novels, and, and a lot of times I want to have the option to switch it to landscape. Does this e-reader allow you to do that? Absolutely. Let us zoom out to the full 100% here. And what you want to do is, if, the, if that wasn't open at the bottom, you just tap the bottom. And then it will be the last setting here that looks like a curved, uh, kind of like a curved arrow. So you want to touch that, which is a very difficult button to reach, by the way, in the corner, and it'll change it to landscape. So from there, you can continue on your uh, PDF Mer experience. Yeah, your and, merry uh, little way. Tap the side again. It doesn't orientate everything. It doesn't orientate the software. It just yeah. orientates the uh, picture. So that, now that's something that's like, if you're looking at landscape, it's really hard to yeah, to it's, it's that. strange. It's weird that these don't conform to there. Yeah. Uh, Although hopefully in a future firmware update they address it. But I do like the live preview. I think that that's really cool. And I do like the fact that when you're browsing around the document, we've seen a lot of e-readers that have like really poor re real-time rendering where you'll be moving and it'll be like constantly refreshing every time you, you move that. It just, all it does is basically all just flicker over and over and over. Whereas this is completely readable as you're moving it around. You can see encounter groups right there as I'm moving it. I mean, you can pretty much read that. Yeah, if, if anything, the pictures are a little bit washed out, but that doesn't make a big difference. No. You're, you're mainly going around to zoom. Exactly. So this is pretty well a very complex PDF. It's around 100 megs and when Peter opened it, it pretty well insta-loaded. Yes, yes it did. I mean, we can go to virtually any page and go to virtually any amount of zoom and it's going to load and you can I mean on such a small reader it's it's doing a very good job of uh, rendering pictures. So this is the traditional PDF experience that you're going to experience if you look at complex like uh, role-playing type material uh, or, or even all the way to like other newspapers. It doesn't really have a, a lot of reflow options that users might uh, have experience with. I know with uh, say the Sony 600 or even the 650 had a bit a, a lot of reflow options but as e-readers have gravitated towards touch screens as opposed to in the past e-readers have had to re rely exclusively on reflow when touchscreen technology wasn't too prevalent right yeah i would say so i mean we and a good example of this would be the sony prs t2 i mean even with the full screen you can pinch and zoom to get right on in there whereas with this it just gets confused and tries to turn a page but um uh, you do have full capabilities to zoom in, as we showed you on the dungeon manual. It's no different than this. Uh, you can zoom on in there and find that sweet spot, and it renders for you, and uh, away you go. Read uh, up close and conform it to exactly what you want it to look like. Okay, one thing I'm wondering, though, we've say we we zoom in, right? So right. just zoom in randomly to like a point, so it's a little bit more readable than this. Okay, now once you get to that zoom point. Um, we can click the X and get out of that. Now, if we turn a page, is this zoom feature 
going over from page to page. You're actually just moving it at that point. You can't reach the next page because you're still, even though that little legend mini-map has gone away, you are still in the kind of navigation mode. So essentially, it isn't like a reflow, a reflow option where it breaks it down into four quadrants and every time you switch a page, it moves over to yeah. there and then there and then there. So, um, and of course, you can't pinch and zoom to get back out of it. You are on this kind of navigation mode so it's a little bit of a different approach but I mean it definitely gets the job done especially on such a small screen reader all right so we've looked at ebooks both purchased and side loaded we've looked at complex PDF images in the form of uh, Dungeons Master Guide we've lo also looked at a side loaded uh, newspaper so we've pretty well checked out the entire reading experience. The one thing I want to do show you is shelf creation. You see here we have our, our goodie reader shelf here. If you wanted to create a new shelf, it's pretty simple. You just click on the plus symbol, you create a name. I don't know. That's fine. Something <laughs> like that. Hi. And then it will ask you to add a book. I'm going to add The Art of War. And we can create. And there you go. That book's there. It's very easy to add new books. As you saw when we were reading a book, there is actually an option there to add it to shelf. We've pretty well showed you this uh, whole device head to toe. The last thing I want to do is just show you some of the settings features here. You click on extras. You actually have a web browser. Kind of like the experimental thing that uh, Amazon does with their with all their readers. Yeah, you also have a sketch pad, so you can draw, you can save. Good picture. Yeah, it's one of my finer works of art. That's what a huge art school student loan gets you, folks. <laughs> all right, so you have your sketch and it's appearing there on the main screen. I might have to export that as a wallpaper and save it to my PC later. Put on the blog. Yeah, totally. So our lead-in image for the Kobo Mini review will be that drawing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you do have a web browser. It loads fairly fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, basically visit, you know, other websites. The one thing I would probably say is surfing the internet on an e-ink screen is not the most ideal experience. You're mainly dealing with like a ton of different uh, refresh issues, but you saw like on the whole web pages do load pretty fast. But again, this is all dependent on your Wi-Fi connection. Uh, if you're using dial up with like a Wi-Fi router, you're going to probably get a slower experience. But you know, on just casual Google searches, things are loading up fast and um, the load time really depends on how extensive or image heavy a website is on our say app store for instance uh, goodreader.com slash apps supports both playbook and android it's very image heavy but it did load in a pretty respectable uh, fashion yeah, I would say so I mean you still have this kind of navigation uh uh, option two and you can see I mean even with all these images and slideshows going I mean it's moving around pretty well yeah uh, if you click on options here there really isn't a ton of different internet options like there's nothing to change JavaScript or just disable images completely I would have liked to see an option to just disable images image loading so you almost get that sort of pseudo ebook experience but online that would be nice yeah totally so th those are just some of the features that it has of course um like any e-reader or device out there there's expanded features but this is truly an international reader so you do have access to plenty of different languages um you can pretty well see everything here pretty so standard menus yeah so uh, what are your th final thoughts i really like it uh i mean as we've uh played with the glow first and then this uh, this does just seem like a smaller version of the glow without a uh, light on it so I mean you're getting the full experience as you did on the glow you get zoom, uh, full PDF customization with the zoom function how you can move it around and find that spot that you really want um, the ebook experience both side loading and um, purchasing from Kobo they're both they're both 
will almost work flawless with all the settings, if not a couple are missed. Uh, I love the, the page refresh rate options. It allows you to choose between one and six pages. I mean, uh, it's a small, small e-reader. It's a very tiny e-reader. You can almost get your hand around it. So, uh, I mean, comparing it to a standard six inch e-reader, it's, uh, it's like a little baby. <laughs> so um, I would say that although it's small, it does have an 800 megahertz processor. It gets the job done uh, pretty well. And uh, here's the whole family that they have right now. Uh, we'll show you a uh, comparison video. Uh, or a triparison. A triparison, um, rather, uh, of the Kobo Glow. Kobo Mini and the Kobo Touch uh, with the latest updates in a future video, but I would say that the Kobo Mini is doing a great job for such a small screen. Yeah, I mean, good things do come in small packages, and um, this is a very pocket-friendly e-reader. We had fit this literally in any of the box back pockets of the the clothes we were wearing and it fits into like the side of my uh, you know uh, coat pocket so it's very cool I like the fact that you can change the back covers we did experience at times when the device had grown a little bit unresponsive I'm not a huge fan of the way that the keyboard is laid out mm -hmm. I find you know we were saying that like you know you were half touching the, the side of the bezel and half touching the display screen and um, you know there are a lot there are a few shortcomings but it's like that in any type of piece of technology you can either dwell on it or you can look at some of the cool features I like I I like the ebook reading experience. Yeah. I like how when I'm loading inside loaded books, I can still access the dictionary in all the different languages. I can uh, change the size of the fonts. There's a ton of different customization options for the EPUB experience. They did uh, absolve the support from Mobi, which from I the found, touch. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't know if I'm a huge fan about that, but if you use programs like Caliber, which is a free and open source program, it does give you the ability ability to uh, change a lot of open source Mobi files that don't have digital rights management to EPUB. So if you have a huge Mobi library, it's very easy to convert it from one format to another. It's a very good e-reader. If you live in, in most markets, you can get this from shopereaders.com. So in any market that you can't purchase this directly or if it's not on sale yet, simply get it from uh, www.shopereaders.com. For all of our other videos, as well as comparisons and everything else, check out youtube.com slash goodyreader. And for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and industry uh, insider knowledge, visit goodyreader.com. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. This is Peter. And everybody take care. Oh,